Hi, Dr. Kainer, I'm Grant. Good Hi. to meet you. Good to meet you. So, I've heard that you've made a breakthrough in portable power. What's the nature of this breakthrough? Well, we began working on graphene, which is a single layer of carbon, and it turns out it can store a tremendous amount of energy. Oh, like a battery. Like a battery, but not quite. So, a battery stores its energy by intercalating lithium ions, and so it's a relatively slow process. Right. But we're working on something called supercapacitors. So all the charge is stored on the surface. And if you have an enormous surface on the order of several thousand meters squared per gram, in other words, multiple football fields per gram, you can store a lot of charge very quickly. So how did you make this breakthrough? Turns out that graphene is a single layer of carbon. So if you look at this, this is, this is graphite. So okay. graphene's the, the top layer. So, so regular, say, pencil lead would be graphite. That's exactly right. So pencil lead is just graphite plus clay. Okay, but then the graphene is just one layer. That's right. And in a sense, when you're writing, you're having these layers slide off of this structure and onto your paper. Okay. In fact, you can look at the natural mineral graphite. This is how graphite comes out of the ground. It's actually really light. It's, it's, it's much lighter than it looks. It's not that dense. Yeah. And you could take a piece of paper and you could write with it as is. Okay. So. Graphene, a single layer, was discovered by Navasov and Geim in 2004. They shared the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work in 2010. But I actually started on graphene much earlier than that. Okay. So in the year 2000, one of my colleagues, uh, Tom Hahn from Mechanical Engineering, knocked on my door. And he said, I understand you're a resident expert in carbon. And I said, well, I've worked <laughs> on carbon a long time. I had worked on it uh, as a postdoctoral fellow. And he said, I need you to make me a single layer carbon. And I'm like, why would you want that? And he said, well, I did these calculations, and a single layer of carbon would be the best reinforcement for polymers. So it would be a way a to... Structural reinforcement. Exactly. Okay. So then he's like, how would you make it? And I said, well, graphite's a layered compound. So you can intercalate, you can stick things in, and then you can exfoliate, you can break them apart. Okay. And so by the, in 2002, we took out a patent, we believe the world's earliest patent on how to make graphene. After Vasov and Geim did their work, we actually switched methods because we wanted to come up with a, a scalable process. Um, they, they use scotch tape to peel pyrolytic graphite. Scotch tape? Yes, scotch tape. <laughs> so you get, yeah, to get a very fine layer. Yes, and so it's great for physics experiments, and they were able to do their work and, and look at all the amazing properties of graphene from a physics perspective. Right. But of course, if you're going to do energy storage, you need lots and lots of graphene. Okay. And so peeling with scotch tape isn't going to get you there. So we began solution processing. Yeah. And so we developed a method where we take graphite, we oxidize it, turn it into graphite oxide, disperses in water. And from there, we can coat it on any substrate. And we're going to show you how we can use a laser and convert it into graphene. So this is a capacitor, super capacitor. But essentially, normally you'd have a capacitor with two, say, metal conductors with an insulator in between. What makes the graphene ideal as a supercapacitor? So the traditional capacitor that you're thinking of stores very little energy yeah. because it's just two parallel plates and it stores it on between those plates. Right. So a supercapacitor actually stores its energy internally. So you can think <laughs> of a positive electrode and a negative electrode, but each of those electrodes has tremendous internal surface area. And that's why we need graphene because if you can access both sides of each sheet in graphene, you have a surface area in the order of 2,630 meters squared per gram. All right, all right, let's talk about this model here. So we're just talking about this top layer, the, the blue right here. That's correct. Where would the charge be stored here? So if you pull off this top layer, you charge, yeah. you'd store charge on both sides of every surface. Okay. You can't do that with graphite because it's one big block, so you're only storing charge on the top and the bottom surface. And so these layers are super, super thin. That's right. They're atomic thinness. They're as thin as you can possibly get. So you don't need an insulator. Do you need an insulator between you each layer? No. So you have two electrodes. Between them, it, it must be an insulator or dielectric. Right. But if they're physically separated. So you're still storing this enormous charge internally for each of the two electrodes. So think of it this way. 2,600 meters squared per gram is the size of four and a half football fields. So one gram, a very tiny amount. 
That's incredible. Okay, now I'm starting to get the idea. Now, you have all these layers of graphene. So in order to create a large supercapacitor, you, ideally you'd have many layers of graphene. Yes. What prevents them from collapsing? So that, that's themselves? an excellent question. So previous to our work, people who made graphene, when they tried to put them together enough layers to make a supercapacitor, many of the layers restacked. Right. And so then you end up with graphite and it doesn't store much charge. Right. So what we did is we used a laser and as the laser converts the graphite oxide into graphene, it actually blows out a gas that keeps it from restacking. And so we actually have a structure. My advisor, Neil Bartlett, um, 30 years ago, postulated that if, you, that he said graphite's the world's best electrode material. It's cheap, it comes out of the ground, right. it's highly conductive, right. but it has one drawback, low surface area. So he was interested in drilling three-dimensional holes at an atomic level, something nobody's been able to figure out how to do. Yeah. But he called that holy graphite. Okay. And essentially, we've made holy graphite, spelled H-O-L-E-Y, yes. from a completely different process, starting from a solution that we hit with a laser, we dry it out, we hit it with a laser, and it absorbs the laser light, converts it, gets hot, and blows off carbon dioxide. As the carbon dioxide comes out, it forms graphene, but a three-dimensional form of it. That's incredible. So all in that one step, you are able to get the structure that you needed. That's exactly which right. Which explains why you have so many of these discs floating around your lab. It's not that you're listening to music or watching movies. This is what you used to make the graphene. That's exactly right. We create graphene on the surface of those CD discs.